Hey, okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. David? Yeah, can you start with uh, who, who will be out today, who won't be able to go? Or uh, Carlos uh, Watkins will be out. Um, also, uh, Donovan Wilson will be out. And uh, who's the other one there? Dorrance Armstrong. Dorrance Armstrong, thank you. What about Keno Neal? Uh, well, he's in, he's, in, he's in COVID protocol. Okay. You don't read the, uh, you don't follow the internet? I do, but I was just, okay. you know, you get his addresses, so. <laughs> <laughs> you just talk yeah, about. Yeah, and the, also Ty, the second. He's in, oh, yeah. He's out, he's out, yes. Yeah. Can you, the Neil situation, uh, is it different than the past? Is there a chance he could play because he didn't test positive? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a chance, you know, you know, based on the protocol, and there's obviously different variations of it, but he's 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 in it right now, and and as the testing progresses, you know, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what day he comes out. With Inzeki, uh what's his status going forward? He's still doing more tests to see what happens. Yeah, he's. I mean, it's an illness, so uh, he will not be available this week. What about Amari Cooper? Uh, Mark Mario will be limited. When, when you look at this Philly de defense, how different is it from the one that you've been kind of accustomed to seeing over the years with what Schwartz has things? I mean, there's definitely some, you know, characteristics that are the same. Um, you know, obviously the personnel. Um, you know, they were in the same system for a while, so you can see the carryover, particularly up front, you know, with the charges and, and the stances. But uh, there's been, you know, there's only two games, so we, we've seen a little more variation in the Atlanta game uh, than we did against against San Francisco. So, you know, we're we're still in the unscouted look focus, uh, being this early in the season. Bless you. Uh, we recognize it's a. Uh, we rec we recognize that you only get one. To, uh, right, right, so, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. But uh, we we do you know recognize it's a new staff and you know and a new defensive coordinator and uh, just trying to continue just to look at you know his past and you know just try to make sure we're expecting the unexpected. Get back to Doris and, and uh, Carlos. That's a fine. I mean, this is unbelievable. I, I, oh my God. This is not unbelievable. Oh, is this, oh, is this normal? Yeah. Oh. Well, Rich, now, now I know why Rich wants to go back to virtual. Yeah. <laughs> Get back to Doris and uh, Carlos. Uh, Doris has a high ankle sprain. I mean, it's unlikely. To, is that correct? And, and just, that's not yeah, I, one day. I mean, one week thing, is it? Well, they won't be. They won't be available this week. You know, both Dorrance and Carlos. But uh, but they're doing well. I, I just saw uh, Carlos in the weight room, so uh, he, he feels good and he's making progress. So with Doris out, does that mean more in for Micah? I'm not going to really get into that. I mean, you know, we there's be more opportunities. You know, it's playing different combinations. I think really the true focus is, you know, this offense is different than the first two teams we played. I mean, it's, this offense is about speed and space. Uh, you know, their offensive line is, you know, just had that one injury uh, last week. But, uh, you know, this is the healthiest they've been uh, in, in some time. So, you know, big athletic offensive line with uh, five perimeter, perimeter players that can, that can really, really go. So we're really focused on speed and space and, and what we need to do to, to combat that. How much will you look at the two practice squad guys to move up because you got some D line issues help wise? I mean, that's all part of it. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm disrespectful here. I, I really don't want to get into specifics of that. Um, you know, we're going to, uh, that's the, the beauty of uh, this new roster, you know, um, set up. Uh, it, it gives you the ability to move guys up. And uh, so, you know, you have potentially a COVID, you know, exempt also. So, I mean, all those things factor into it. But, you know, you have a projected 48 each week, uh, but you never just work 48 players. You know, so you, you, you usually work in this in the range of 54 to 55, and so we'll see how it shakes out. We've always asked, we've asked you before about Micah's versatility and, and what that gives you, but it, do you also want to avoid, to some extent, of basing your decision based on injuries at other positions every week? I mean, I know you're looking at matchups, and sometimes that over that, that dictates what you do. Mm -hmm. You want to stay away from that, where it's always, well, here's the guy that's hurt, so maybe we can move him here. I mean, it, I think it's clearly why you play chess all week. I mean, you, you play you play the different combinations, and you know you, you want to have foresight on what move you want to you know make next. Because you you really when you get into the game, you want to be playing checkers. You know, you want to be playing fast and and things like that. And and that's no different with Micah or 
you know what personnel groups match up the best um, you know against their against their offense too so you know and, and once again this is uh, you know new play caller on offense so I mean we're, we're just really trying to stay focused on you know what to expect from from the Eagles Mike, has Randy cleared COVID protocol? What's the ramp up period? Uh, Andy's, or excuse me, Randy's, he's, he's been to work the last two days, so. Ty is out for the week? Correct. He will not, Ty will not play in the game. So the Ty, Carlos, and DA. With Ty, is it something worse than heat exhausted? It's just, it's just, a, it's, it's an illness, and, you know, you got to test it. There's a, you know, there's a plan to bring him back, you know, so uh, you just got to be smart. I mean, this is a, this is a long year, so. I mean, I was frankly, I thought I'd get a few attaboys for declaring these guys out so early, but we won't, we won't do that again. So, <laughs> God bless you twice. So. I, know, I, I know you've moved on to the next game. There's one play, but right, a, yeah. but there's one play from Sunday I want to ask you about. It was a third down conversion to get into the red zone early, and uh, Jack got rid of the ball real quickly to Dalton. Um, mm -hmm. And Zach Martin, he blocked one defensive lineman with his left hand, and he blocked another with his right. I, I was just, it seemed like something for the Hall of Fame reel for him. I was just curious your impressions of that particular play with, with Zach's effort. I mean, I, I thought Zach, I think we talked about it a little bit on Monday, you know, the, the ability to, I mean, I just think it shows you his, his experience and instinct because, you know, the, the, the great guards, in, you know, in the centers, I mean, there's, when you get in just the basics of pass protection, nobody runs through the A and B gaps. That's, that's the first thing you put up when you talk about protection adjustments, protection philosophy. So, I mean, but it's one thing to say it, rep it, and then you know, obviously execute it on Sunday. So, I mean, I, I thought he played, you know, one of the better games that I've been a part of, you know, just being here with him. Uh, but I just think it shows you his, you know, his level of instinct and awareness, but also the ability to get it done. Is that rare? It's not common, that's for sure. Yeah. Mike, do you think Schultz is more physical than he was last year? Played more physically? Oh, I, 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 I like the, I love the question because I think you're recognizing how he's playing. I, I think he, you know, clearly had probably one of his best run blocking games. You know, I think just, you know, he, he's playing with such aggressiveness with his technique. Uh, Dal Dalton approaches the game like a quarterback. Uh, you know, he's, he puts a tremendous amount of time. Him and Blaker, you know, they're upstairs all the time uh, in the coach's office. So I just think you're, you're watching a, a true pro execute. So it, clearly, I think his, his technique and fundamentals is, is, is much better than it was last year. What's been most uh, encouraging about Osa's development through the first two years? Well, I mean, he's jumped out. You know, I mean, he's, he was, you know, I, I thought Chauncey Goulston was, you know, coming out of the spring was probably the most impressive of the young linemen. And then I thought Osa jumped out there in, in training camp and it just keeps progression. I, I, I really like the, obviously, the ability and, and what he brings to the table. But the, the young professionalism is, is something that uh, I've been impressed with. And, so far with our guys, and they need to continue to build off. And I think Oso is a clear example of that. Since you brought up Golson, how is he in working back? And is, is there a good chance he'll be active this week? I hope so. I mean, that's up to him. I mean, you know, really, the, the activation, I've always felt, uh, you know, that's why I think it's important to have competition during the week. And that's how we set up the projected 48. You know, we create competition on who's going to be up. And I thought he did a really nice job last week. I, I was, frankly, nervous about you know, playing him just because of, the, you know, just having one padded practice to, before he played. And, and uh, But there's definitely uh, a feeling amongst everybody else that, you know, he, he really looked he really looked good in practice, looked like he was ready to go. So I hope he builds off of last week's work. Mike, going back to the draft night when you guys took Micah, when the corners go off the board like that, is there any sense of disappointment or is it automatic? Okay. Well, I think it's, yeah, clearly. I think we, we you can see why. I mean, uh, you're talking about an impact player, and that, that's that's really what was the the common uh, theme in the draft room. You know, he's a, he's an impact player that has, you know, position flexibility. So, and and he's he's been exactly that for us. So, um, I, I didn't, you know, we, we saw him playing uh, as a rusher in certain defenses, but to go out in the second game and to play that as a primary position, I, I think speaks volumes about the young man's ability. Is his ability to close something that separates him from rookies, I mean, the guys you've been around? Definitely. No, I agree with that. I mean, he's, 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 he's rare. I mean, you see it on the sack. You, you see it on his pursuit. Uh, he, he just gets on. He, he just gets on ball carriers and receivers so quickly, you know. And, I, and he definitely, uh, particularly when the quarterback, you know, 
bounces out of the pocket. I mean, there's not a whole lot of time for the quarterback to, you know, to extend the play. I mean, he definitely has rear closing speed and quickness. Mike, your thoughts on Jalen Hurts the first couple of games we've seen compared to when you played? Yeah, I think he's, you know, if I was doing the, you know, valuation from year one to year two, I, I think he's definitely taking that second year jump. I, I think he's looked very composed. You know, Jalen's totally commanded our offense. I know it's a new system for him, but, um, you know, he looks a lot more comfortable in the pocket. You know, I thought he hit some really nice deep throws against San Francisco, uh, but he's a weapon. I mean, he gets he gets outside the pocket. He's productive, uh, but his eyes are still downfield, and, and I think that's something you always look for, particularly in young quarterbacks. So um, I, I think he's off to a really good start. Um, I think his statistics speak for himself, but uh, I've been impressed with him the first two games. Mike, there were times late last season when y'all talked about the finish on defense or lack thereof. I know you're not focused on last year, but how much has the energy and finish been key to the well, the energy and finish was, was frankly, a, it was a focus for a whole football team. We, it wasn't good enough last year, uh, clearly in the first half of the season. So uh, when we break it down in pursuit and finish on defense and in coverage units, and we, we you know, we, when we call it, we term it cover and finish on offense in the return game, because, you know, it's just like anything, the cover and finish, uh, you know, you got one guy that carries the ball, the other 10, they need to cover the football. So. You know, so much about this this league is is built on the ball security and you know it's securing the football when you have it, but you know securing it when you don't. And uh, I'd like to stand up and think that we're never going to have a, a, a turnover or you know we're never going to fumble the ball. But you know it's just like the one that happened against the Chargers. You know Tyron just to, to get right on that football. That, that was that was a big play in the game. And so uh, finish is uh, something that. I'm sure every coach has his method, uh, his verbiage, you know, his met, you know, how he goes about it. Uh, so that that's been a focus of ours, and, and we're off, to, we're off to a good start. I, I didn't think it was great in training camp. I thought it was up and down, um, but you know, weeks one and two, I, I, we we definitely have checked that box. So we're, we're off to a good start this year. What's the key to keeping that good start and building up? What's the key to keeping it good? Well, it's it's a it's a fundamental. Uh, it's you know to me it's it's we have the you know six fundamentals of cowboy football, and that's that, and that's definitely one of them. You know, finish, pursuit, and finish, and cover and finish. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you.